Midterms matter, and we're here with you live as we look at the Capitol Dome shrouded by scaffolding a two-year, $60 million facelift for this beautiful monument, this landmark in our nation's capital. Good evening from Washington. I'm Brian Patrick, and in nearby College Park, Maryland, our Jason Calvey is watching some of the governor's races. He's been following the race there in Maryland. Jason, good evening. Brian, I want to talk to you about some of the issues. We're getting some preliminary exit polling data, and it's showing that the economy was a major issue for half of the voters. Other issues that were touched upon in the exit polls were issues like immigration and abortion, issues that Catholics are weighing in on as well. The Catholic Church is clear on where the faithful must stand on life issues. The U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops Voters Guide states the ultimate requirement is to protect the weakest in our midst, innocent unborn children. But the nation remains divided. According to a recent Associated Press poll, 54% surveyed believe abortion should be legal in most to all cases. 44% believe it should be illegal. These life issues are front and center in the Colorado race, where the personhood amendment is up for a vote. It would add unborn children to those protected by the state's criminal and wrongful death act. Colorado citizens have rejected similar measures twice before when it included a ban on abortion. And in Tennessee, a measure on the ballot would give state lawmakers more power to regulate abortion. The church teaches respect for life includes the fair treatment of immigrants. In the same AP poll, 57% of those surveyed say immigration is an extremely important to very important issue. Even though immigration reform was a hot topic recently, candidates have been relatively silent on the issue on the campaign trail. But at least in, but at least in the exit data, we're, we're seeing that immigration reform is an important issue. More than half of the people surveyed said they, they think, and this is nationwide we're talking about here, Brian, half of the people think that illegal immigrants should have a pathway to citizenship here in this country. And, but also the data showed that abortion was a major issue for, for people as well, and that half of the country also supports keeping abortion legal. Brian? All right, Jason Calvey reporting from College Park, Maryland. Jason, we'll be back with you in just a little bit. Meanwhile, we're joined to talk about some of these issues by Marjorie Dannensfelser, the president of the Susan B. Anthony List, a group dedicated to electing pro-life candidates, and Gene Atkinson, the executive director of Clinic, the Catholic Legal Immigration Network. Thank you both for joining us. We'll talk about immigration in just a minute, but I did want to touch on the life issues. This, this is sharply dividing some of these races, both in the Senate as well as the gubernatorial races, is it not? Well, there is no question that it is uh, always a factor in elections. I would say there's a big change in this particular election. We've been hearing about the war on women and about how Emily's List and abortion groups have been using this in elections to divide the electorate and to bring the women's vote over to the Democratic side. The change this time that we're seeing in the campaigns that we're involved in is that the war on women theme, the message in the middle, which has always been abortion, that center is not holding. The abortion issue as part of that theme in Arkansas, Louisiana, North Carolina, Kansas, Iowa, it is really gone. And you know why? Because that issue is really not working with the people of Louisiana, North Carolina, Arkansas, Kansas, and Iowa, because the candidates that are incumbents are really wildly out of step with the base in those places. So an organization like Emily's List, which is the biggest pro-choice moneymaker on that side, they're advising their candidates, don't talk about the abortion issue. Sublimate it, because they don't want to hear actually your, per, your position. Clarity is the enemy when it comes to abortion for the pro-choice candidate in these places. Well, people aren't talking a whole lot about immigration either, Gene. It was just a few months ago, it was a huge issue as we were watching these tens of thousands of children crossing the border without parents. But that sort of died out going into the election. Why was that? That's correct. And as Jason said, although the majority of Americans do think we need immigration reform, it has not been a major issue during the elections. I think the Democrats have not wanted to energize anti-immigrant voters. And the Republicans are torn on it. They're not, they're of two minds. And so I think everyone's just content to let this issue sit. Will it come back up when the elections are over? Absolutely. We're expecting the president to do some administrative relief for people through executive action. And ultimately, given the demographics of the country, there will be immigration reform. It's going to be 
both necessary. It's what is right, but it's also going to be politically expedient. All right. And Marjorie, with McConnell winning his race mm -hmm. and two of the six seats needed for the Republicans to have control of the Senate, do you see pro-life legislation popping up immediately? Yes, I do. And it begins with, uh, with McConnell himself. Uh, right after his primary and, uh, and, and, his, and his actual primary fight was very relevant to this, he committed to bringing the pain-capable five-month bill up on the Senate floor when he becomes leader in the first 100 days. And that is because it actually is a very important and salient and motivating issue on the ground. There is no question the abortion issue is very, very strong and motivating and a campaign deal maker. Uh, and, and that's not the only reason that McConnell is, uh, he, he actually really believes this, but it's also a political reality. It's a political reality that that's a base that is vitally important. We've had 450,000 doors knocked on in the past several months in all of these states that I'm talking about. This is a group of people that really cares and really will always be counted on to be a political force in politics. So they can't be ignored politically, and we as Catholics and as believers can't be ignored, and we won't be, when it comes to the reorganized Senate. Well, it appears that's gaining momentum tonight. And Marjorie Dannensfelser and Jean Atkinson, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thank you, uh, thank you both for being with us in the latest on the Senate. And the other races are coming up with Suzanne LaFranchi. Also, we'll be joined by Star Parker, who's checking in from California. And our friend James Capretta will be with us here in the studio as EWTN News Nightly's Midterms Matter coverage of the 2014 election continues.